welcome from my end as well. Thank you for participating in this webinar on the adjusted certification process. I'm very glad to see so many of you here. So um, the content will be the adjusted certification process. I'll guide you through it. We have a look at the documents and whenever there is a question, please feel free to raise your hand and we'll answer the question right away when we are still in a specific topic. So I would like to start with you on the um, product range of the, um, carbon standards. So you know that um, we offer standards that um, deal with the quality aspects of the biochar. So that's the WBC or the EBC um, certification where you have to prove that your um, production follows certain regularities and the, pro um, the quality of your product of your biochar also fulfills the regularities and then you get a quality certificate. And when you have this quality certificate, you are free to also move um, through the global C-Sync pathway. So um, the quality is a prerequisite to be able to claim um, global biochar C-Syncs or EBC C-Syncs. And that's about the climate service, so about the emissions that you remove from the atmosphere and store safely for several thousand years. So in this webinar, we will be focusing on this lower part on the global ceasing documentation. And there is some requirements in the in the carbon market um, where you especially for for this product of a climate service where you extract air, um, carbon dioxide from the air and store it um, for several thousand years in biochar in the soil or in materials. Um, as that's a service to like the whole community to to the society and it's something that you can't touch in a way it's just something where where you have to trust that there is a certification a robust um, certification scheme in place which ensures you um as a buyer that you're ceasing that this amount of um, co2 removal is really extracted from the air and that's um, that's something where we see in the carbon market, and we also got um, the feedback from a lot of our clients that, um, in in order to be able to sell these clients uh, these these credits, um, the customers of carbon credits require a very transparent documentation of um, the CO2 removal from the atmosphere and the CO2 storage um, in form of biochar. And therefore, we decided to adjust the um, certification process in a way that you can. We we will also provide all these public data on um, the CSYNC registry. And before we dive into this adjusted certification process in detail, um, I would like to talk about the timelines first, as we've received lots of feedback that there is. Um, uncertainties um, regarding the implementation of the new processes. Apologies for that. Um, so firstly, it's coming. So it, it will be at some point of time will be mandatory. So it makes sense for you to start as soon as possible. Um, and as I just said, it gives you the market advantage and it's demanded by a lot of the buyers um, who, who want to have the um, see things in order to use them to, for example, compensate some of their emissions. And there we compete with other um, see things or other climate services that have public documentation. And so it often is a key selling point. And secondly, there will be transition periods. So there is updates to the artisan C-Sync's planned and the EBC C-Sync um, standard will be replaced by the global biochar C-Sync standard. And so these updates of the standards will come into force um, in the next few months. And then there will be a transition period until they become mandatory also for the existing clients that we have. So um, during the transition period, it makes sense for all customers or for all clients, for all our clients to upload the um, updated documentation according to this process. But it's not mandatory yet, it's voluntary. Um, for new clients, 
that um, join carbon standards after the um, standard updates are published, it's mandatory to provide the public documentation. And for our existing clients, it will become mandatory after the transition periods. So we'll come to this later, but we designed a, um, a modular system in order to um, keep the flexibility that we offer to, uh, regarding supply chains. So it means that some biochar that is produced, for example, this year, may only be used to create a sea sink in 2026. And therefore, because of this independence of all of these processes, um, it um, makes sense to start as soon as possible. So, um, so you will be able to use the produced biochar that you produce now um, in some following years after the transition period ended, because that makes you, yeah, it just easy, eases the process for you. And you don't need to think about the documentation later on because you already started um, documenting it in the way that we need now. So, um, sorry. Um, <laughs> so the now new process looks like this. You know it also from the from the newsletters that um, you register with Carbon Standards and Sarasert, um, which is the third party auditor. Um, then you um, prepare a project design document with a monitoring plan where you also focus on eligibility criteria and you follow the approved methodologies that we have online. So that might be the artisan ceasing standard or the EBC ceasing standard. Um, then you hand in this PDD, um, so the project design document to um, CERCERT and to carbon standards. Um, you have, as you have it right now, there's the technical pre-audit um, and we have some um, like some feedback on your project and then you specify it in the PDD, which then gets validated by um, by Ceres and you get a validation statement and then you start with the project implementation and you do constant monitoring, which will be verified by the inspection visits that take place at least once a year. And then um, you can just run your processes and um, you, you document your operation the whole time and then from time to time it will be verified. And then all the biochar that, um, yeah, that um, pass these, these processes can then um, go further to the issuance of C-Sync certificates um, and then into the registry. So yes, we start with the registration. That's what you know. It, um, it just stays exactly the same. So you said if um, you, in the registration form, you select certification of EBC C-Syncs. And then now um, we start with the next, um, document, that's the project design document, where you describe your project. And there um, it's divided for um, with in the document for the producers, it's on the left hand, and then there is annexes um, for the EBC C-Sync um, processes. And there is, so this is filled out by another person and for all there is the annex of social responsibility for um yeah that's that's valid for the producers and also for the processes um so the idea behind it is that in the biochar projects you usually have the biomass sourcing um, and the production of biochar and the quality of biochar and how the biochar looks like that's controlled by the by the producer but they don't need to know where exactly the biochar ends up being used so it might be that there is several processes and in the end it ends up in some building materials or it might be that there's some process of mixing it to a 
fertilization product, and then it ends up being used on soil. So this is different possibilities um, that you have at the moment, and the producer needs to decide which of these pathways are possible for my biochar, but they don't need to know exactly what is the processes. So that's the flexibility of the supply chain that, that you have um, working with carbon standards and that you will keep working with carbon standards. So that's why the PDD, like this big document that I showed at the beginning, the, um, um, here on the right left side, the project design documentation for the producers, it covers this part that can be controlled by the producer. So they know, um, did they choose the right methodology? Is it an additional C-Sync that will be created? And it provides detailed um, project planning until the factory gate. So it's about feedstock, it's about the processes and emissions, and you provide your monitoring plane. And it's pretty vague about the Con, like the value chains afterwards and the region. So you can just tell, okay, I will be selling in Europe and that's good enough. And now let us have a look into the document itself. So that's how it looks. Um, you can see it here. Um, that's the document um, cover page and we have some completion aid in the beginning. So there's red parts in the document that must be overwritten by the project proponent by you. Then there's red parts in italic that give you an explanation of what you have to write in there. Um, so these have to be replaced as well. And all the black parts um, are default entries that will be valid for most of the projects. So you don't need to touch them, but it's good to read them and to see whether some of these need to be adopted for you, your specific project. And then you would um, hand this into CSI and service set. And um, if you change the black parts, do it in track change so we can easily recognize those. So on the cover page, um, you provide the name of the project, and the name of the quality manager, the date of this document and the methodology that you follow and the project location, the project start date and a brief summary of the project. So yeah, here that's all data that you that you know by heart or you can also find it in the, um, in the EBC tool, in the EBC portal where you gave all this data already to register with carbon standards. And then this document is divided into um, several chapters. Mm. And we start with the um, purpose and the general description um, of the project. So chapter one is all about the document, uh, all about your project location, um, description of the baseline scenario, project boundaries, all this very general um, parts that we've seen on the slide before in the green um, green box. And that's all data. Yeah, that's that's about your um, your project. And then there is a second chapter that's about the ex-ante estimate of the impact. And then in the third chapter, you describe your technology and your business case. And then like these three chapters, they are um, general information about the project, um, which we have a look at um, soon, where you can also find this data in the existing documents. And then there is um, chapter four, which is about the determination of the ceasing potential. And that's divided into two sub chapters. So the first sub chapter is about the monitoring plan. So that's where you describe what exactly are you going to monitor? So that's the general data, the emission from fossil fuels and the methane emissions. And then all these data that you described on how you will collect them um, to monitor your operatings will be used in the subchapter 4.2 um, for the calculation of the ceasing potential at factory gate. And here that just gives you um, the 
or here in this chapter, we, we wrote down the formulas that are used to calculate the ceasing potential. And for you in the practice, it, that is done by our IT tools, so by either the EBC portal or in future by the biochar tool. And then, um, so that's all for the producer, as there we have the ceasing potential, and that's at the factory gate at the producer. And then there's two, two chapters, uh, or one chapter, um, about the final C sync in the end. So here we have the same structure again. We have the biochar processing where we have the monitoring of the data and then the calculation of the data. So you use the, in the calculation part, you use the the data you monitor where you described how you would monitor them in the in the sub chapter 5.1.1. And then it's the same for the registration of the C sync where it's about the transport parameters until the final location, and then again, the calculation of the C-Sync. So chapter five, as we, as we saw before in, the, in these, um, this slide, is not that I mind too detailed. So that's, that's the part where I said, like, you will be vague about, so you, you give the, um, the, the boundaries. So in the PDD, it says, processes need to document the emissions, but it's not, um, you don't need to be very specific about how the processing will be done. That will be done in the annexes that are specific for the processes. Okay, so now let us have a look um, in the details of this document and where you can also find the, the necessary data. So here again, um, in the general description, it repeats a little bit the front page. So you give, you provide the name again. You um, tell how many pyrolysis plants you have in use and what is your feedstock. You describe in two sentences what is the baseline. So what was there before you started the ceasing creation, and that's that may be that you already have a biochar production in place. Or it may be that you started just for um, for the purpose of sea sinks with your whole creation um, of the plant uh, of your plant. So that's specific to your project how it was before. But it's it's about how was it before you started producing biochar for sea sink creation. Then um, it's about so that's for the most probable case that you'll apply this uh, quality into uh, the, the biochar into soil. So here you would give the project region again. Then it's about the project location. Um, where will your project take place? Um, you can provide the GPS location or the address of your um, plant. Um, then you provide, um, you have the possibility to to extend afterwards also. So you just provide information on where you will document if you have uh, additional plants or additional pyrolysis units just after you hand it in the PDD. Um, then you tell where will the biochar be sold to. So that's what I said before that it's um, that you can just provide, okay, I'll be selling it in whole Europe. Or if you know it more specific, then you can also give the countries. And there um, you provide a map. Then we go into more detail on the baseline scenario. So you describe more detailed what happens to the biochar that you use so far um, and what happened, like what was your business case or what, what did you do? What, what was happening there before this implementation of these exact biochar plant? Um, so yeah, that's that's mainly about the biomass, but only also about the so, yeah the production that was there before. And for the projects, usually it is the case that um, the carbon removal is something additional that wasn't there before. So the sea sinks that are created in the baseline, they are zero tons of CO2 emission uh, to equival equivalence. Um, then we speak about carbon sinks. That's similar for all the projects, most probably. Then 
we go um, provide the project boundaries. So in the um, according to the methodology or to the standard, scope one and two emissions are um, covered completely, and there's transport emissions from scope three also included, um, and all. So that's the project boundary. That's all the emissions that you have to provide in detail. Then we come to the next chapter, that's the eligibility, where you tell, yes, I choose the right standard. So that looks different for artisan standard and for EBC ceasing standard as you, yeah, as that's the that's the chapter where you provide, okay, yes, I I did select the correct methodology to work. And I do have EBC or WBC um, certification in place, so I'm eligible for creating C-Sync, um, EBC C-Sync, for example. There we have also the social impact. Um, that's an extra document that um, is provided on our web page um, here in the um, in the section for the EBC C-Syncs on our web page. You have the documents parts, and there you can um, download the template for social responsibility declaration. That's what's meant here. And then um, the last point of this very um, general points for describing your your production is the additionality. That's something new for you, um, and it is about the about showing that the money you get for the C-Sync really leads to more C-Syncs. So it's not something that is required by your country. So that's the first point. There is no laws in place that force you to do some CO2 removals. And so the project would not, like the idea about uh, behind additionality is that based on the carbon finance, there is more CO2 removals taking place. So if there would be a law that forces you to do what you do, to produce biochar and put it in the soil, then the CO2 revenues, so the, so the carbon credit revenues, would not lead to more CO2 removal, but would just subsidize you, the already existing CO2 removal. So therefore, um, you have to provide um, relevant or you have to show that there is no laws in your country that make it mandatory for you to um, do CO2 removal and storage. That's the first part, um, which will be pretty easy as there is um, no, almost no requirements on this in, in for countries in the world at the moment. And then there is um, the second part where you have to assess whether the biochar ceasing credits um, are necessary for to run your production. So um, your business model only works with the additional revenues from the ceasing credits. And there again, um, that should be the case for almost all of you. Um, and then the last point, if you can't prove 1.6.2, you can also use the CDM tool for additionality, um, which is provided on the CDM web page. Yes, but as I said, like most of you should be good with one and two, and it, you don't like you, yeah, for almost all of you, the CSYNC credits provided significant contribution to the selling of the CSYNC credits uh, of, to, the, to your production. So you can just show that. And for the um, global biochar C-Sync, uh, oh, for the C-Syncs that are created following the global biochar C-Sync standard, um, that's here, which is in public, con or which, which just ended the public consultation a few days ago and where we work in the feedback that we got at the moment. For that, the additionality will look a little bit different, but it will also be shown in the PDD for you. So yes, then you provide ex ante estimation of your impact, and that's where you can just look uh, in the biochar tool um, what 
um, what you did in the past. So here you have your charge, uh, your batches, um, and based on the batches that you have, you can provide the data um, for the past, and then you can just estimate um, how will it be in the future. And that's it. That's that's an estimate which provides an overview of the impact of your project. And then um, we go, we are already the sec third chapter, it's the technology and business case where you describe your production unit more in detail, um, where we look more in detail on the feedstock. Um, and that's also something which you already gave and provided in, um, in the company data. So here you you had all the description of of your company data, and then for the for the for the technical pre audit, um, you already uploaded, for example, the company flowcharts files, and you also provided the details on on your pyrolysis unit, and that's just exact date it, the same data that we need here. For the feedstock, you also know all the um, feedstock, uh, the positive list for feedstock. There you have these, um, sub, um, yeah, there you know where your bio uh, biomass, um, in which of these criteria fi it fits. And then you have to give the distribution channels for your biochar. So for most of you, it will be the geological seasons. And if you also supply to, um, processes that um, inserted to materials, then you just uh, amend this list. And then you give brief description of your business development. So is there like, do you want to stick with this feedstock or do you have other feedstock in mind? Or what is the distribution channels that you aim for in the upcoming years? So that's all about the general description. And now we enter the second uh, the, the chapter four where you have the monitoring plan and that's all about the data that you have to monitor and we gave um, tables where you have the parameters in and a monitoring frequency that you need and then you need to fill in yourself the source of the data so we gave some um, indication how it could look like and this source of data um, you need to think about carefully because that's the data source that you will have to provide to the third party auditors whenever they come to um, do the inspection to prove your points, to prove the monitoring data that you entered into the bio, uh, into the EBC portal here or into the biochar tool that will be um, launched in the next weeks. So that's yet you don't need to make these sources of data public, but you need to have them ready to present them to the service set, to the certification, uh, to the validation and verification body. So that's something where you, which might be differing for each of you as the producers, and you have to think carefully, what is the source of data that I have? Where do I get like this, this um, parameter from? And how can I prove this to the inspector as well? So yeah, that's that's what you have to fill here. And then we gave you all the parameters that are needed and that you record at the moment already um, to provide, um, to calculate the ceasing potential in the end. So yes, that's the, um, that's the um, PDD for the producers. And here, as I said, we gave you all the formula, but that's done by the IT tools. So if you use the IT tools provided, you don't need to change this. Um, yes. So that was um, this document. And for the producers, we also prepared a document. Uh, for the processes, we also prepared a document. Um, it looks um, like this. 
Um, that's a document where we are happy about your feedback. And it's also divided in the data in the summary page where you provide details of your company. And then that's the labeling that needs to be done also on each package of biochar that you produce. And then we have a document number that you provide here, which connects to these two pages. And these two tabs, they will be um, public then again, but they don't show your personal data. So here you provide some details about your processing um, um, activity. So what are you doing? Um, what is the emissions that may happen if you produce several, um, or if you have several processing steps for in your uh, in your factory, then you can also say, okay, I'm I'm mixing it to compost, and I also um, do something else. So I have two products in the end based on the same input material, and then you also provide a flowchart about the processing steps that you do, and then there is the monitoring plan where it's. Um, where we gave some um, yeah some guidance as well. So it's about the material input, about processing, about transport, and maybe there's some steps that um, are maybe relevant for your specific process, and or they may not. Um, and here you you add materials if there's more materials that you that you use that should be in here. So you just add a line to this table. And then as uh, same as for the producers, you also have to um, tell what is the sources of this data and where did you get the emissions factors from and what will be the monitoring frequency that shall be in line with, um, with the um, requirements given by the standards. And then you have the possibility to also give some comments. So these four columns have to be filled um, and then you that's the monitoring plan according to which you'll do the monitoring later on. And again, for the sources, um, you don't have to make them public, but you have to have them present for the inspections. Yes, so that's the template and we, um, we are happy about feedback on this template, whether that's um, whether that's implementable by the processes and it fulfills their needs or whether you need some adaptations because it is not flexible enough, for example, for your, um, for your um, processing. So after um, you fill the PDD, then there's the step of validation where the where Cereset, um compares whether the PDD fill, fulfills all the rules of the methodology of the ceasing standard, and then they issue a validation report. And now we are here at this stage, you are um, allowed to enter the party of starting the implementation and the operation um, as you got the validation statement of your PDD and you are sure, okay, my project activity fits to the um, requirements of the methodologies. And then you start with your implementation and your operation. Um, you provide the monitoring report, which is just a cover page, so to say, um, and all the annexes. This annex is an export from the Biochat tool. For the moment, it would be an export from the EBC portal. So that's all the values that um, are necessary for the calculation of, this, um, of the CO2 um, removals that you achieved. And you also provide the certificates that you have, so the um, um, C-Sync potential certificate with your product list and the, um, the analysis results, which will be not public in this way, but they are um, to be for provided for services as you do at the moment as well. So basically here you um, yeah, you have to fill this document at the moment. We are working on having that um, 
included into our IT tool, so it will be created automatically. But at the moment, you have to fill these this cover page, and then there is an export from the EBC portal or in the future from the Biochat tool and the documents that you hand in already. So there is no much change on this. And yes, so what we just said, so you you'd monitor everything you hand it in and then um, you get the verification. The verification works at is, is it, as it does at the moment. So the monitoring itself, your monitoring report is compared towards the PDD. And then you get the finding P, um, report that you know, and there will be um, a verification report, which is a summary of the inspection report that is um, that that is provided at the moment. Um, and the verification report will be publicly available um, and it doesn't contain the personal data um, and it's not as detailed as the inspection report. And this verification report is um, provided for by Cereset for the producers and there is also um, the same verification report for the processors and then um, so either you get the verification report for the producer or for the processor, and it just um, contains the verification statement on um, on your production and on the batches that you have. Um, at the moment, there is already this step that you know that after you have the inspection, you get some finding report from the inspector, and then Sarah said, um, does another round with the desk review where you then get the review of the verification report. That's just the same process stays at, uh, or it, that we continue with this process as it is at the moment. So the verification for you will almost look the same, but there is um, different documents that are um, created at the end by Sales Set. And then with this verification, um, you you can be assured that your production of this year is verified by Sereset and you can move on to the issuance of the CSYNC certificates um, where it's the responsibility of the first CSYNC owner to look where the biocha that they want to implement in a matrix in the final storage site where it came from. So you have to look backwards from, from your biocha where was the last processor? Where was it? Um, was there another processor before? And who was the producer? And then you collect all the data. So you collect the PDD from the producer and the annex of the PDD from the processors and the validation reports and the verification reports. And you puzzle them up to have the composite modular verification report in the end. And that's. Um, so if you are the one that um, wants to register this CSYNC, it means for you that you have two processors. So you have to collect the verification report for processor for this processor and for the other processor and for the producer. And you can provide all these reports together. And then we have a verification of the whole chain. And if you are, if there wasn't the second processing step, but the um, biochar was applied to the matrix, to the final matrix, just after the first processing step, you would only collect the verification report um, for the processor ABC and the um, producer's verification report. So in the end, um, from all the documents that are there, you have to collect the, the ones that are um, relevant for you, but they don't need to be modified anymore. So you just take the um, PDD for the producer as it is and for the processor as well. And then um, we are at the stage of issuance of CC certificates because we can provide the, um, the project design document, the validation report, the monitoring report, and the verification report for all different steps. And then 
the C-Sync goes into the C-Sync registry, where under the public files, um, people can access um, the documents for, um, for all the steps that the biochar went through, but they only see what was done because for the processes, everything um, is encoded with the documents numbers and it's not, um, not connectable to the name of the processes. So yeah, that was um, a run through the new um, process. And now um, it's open to questions again. Okay, I think it means silence means that uh, there are no further questions. So thanks a lot uh, for your participation. And um, as we said, in case you have questions in the future, you can always contact um, uh, your broker or uh, us at info at carbonstandards.com and we are happy to answer your questions. Thanks a lot for your participation and have a nice day. Goodbye.